So you were doing a show, and you had a a racist fan, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, Marco Island. You remember his name? Um, oh no, that, that was the place. That Marco Island was the. It was Captain Brian's comedy off the hook comedy club okay was the name of the comedy club it was marco island florida was uh-huh. where it happened it was last summer okay so he started saying a bunch of bullshit on, on uh you know during the show yeah you he wouldn't ki- shut up he wouldn't shut up like it, for one the comedy club isn't that big and it's it's one thing about marco island we always say everything's great about the gig except the gig because the it's a great city it's you're on a beach the hotel was right on the water. It was great, right? But, you know, the way it's set up, it's a restaurant slash comedy club. So comedy clubs are built to, uh, you know, maximize the laughs. Like the laughs just bounce off the walls and it's, it's low ceilings. And there's, there's an there's a art to it. Mm-hmm. This is just a restaurant that they, they have a comedy club and they bring in big name comics. And so I get on stage and immediately he's, ta- he's talking as I'm walking to the stage. I got to walk by his table. At one point, he turned his chair this way. I'm over here on stage. He's, he's not even facing me talking to his table. I'm like, dude, and I'm, I'm trying to let it go, and I touch on it, and I ask him, you know, could you be quiet? And he just finally, I just told him, I said, dude, you got to go. And I'm being polite about it and because his table was being cool. It's one thing to have a rowdy table where they're all like this. He was the only one. Like, he had six people at his table. The other five people was fine. But he's just not stopping. And then um, I was polite. I said, but you got to go. I said, this is what's going to happen. I said, you're going to leave. I was like, you're not getting your money back. I was like, because I'm on a door deal. I said, so I appreciate the money you paid me, but you're not getting that back. I said, and you're going to complain about why you got kicked out. I said, that's not going to help either. (laughs) I was like, you're going to pay your bill. You're not getting refunded your, your money that you paid for the comedy show. I said, but you have to go. And then, so he said, on the way out, he said the N-word in some capacity. I can't mm-hmm. remember. And uh, at first he said it initially. And I was like, oh. And I thought I heard it wrong. I said, there's no way he's that bold. Then he said again on the way out, he yelled it on the way out the door. And I go, oh, so I did hear it. Then when I got home that night, when I got back to the hotel that night. Wait, wait wasn't your wife in the audience? She was by the door. She was standing by the, she was, she was by the door. As he's walking by, throwing out end bombs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so we got home that night, and I at first I asked her, "Did he say what I thought?" She goes, "I think so." She goes, "Even she was taken back. Like he just was that bold, you know." But as he said it, he was leaving. So my wife isn't gonna go chase him in the parking lot. She's, you know, we just we don't do that. <laughs> so karma kicks in. He leaves a message on my Facebook. My Uh, a personal message. So tonight at my show, I'm on stage and a guy kept talking the whole show. And then at one point, I was doing a Trump joke and he said, yeah, there's more of us than there is of them. And he kept talking. So I kicked him out of my show. And this is what he sent me on Facebook. Yeah, his name's Joseph Lanham. And he sent this to me as a message on Facebook. I would read it, but I'm not allowed. So I hope everybody sees this message, Joe. Now everybody knows who you are. Hope your boss sees it, if you got a job. But that uh, $40 you spent on a ticket to see me, I'm going to donate that to the NAACP, you racist fuck. And then... uh. So I just reposted his uh, message Mm -hmm. and his name was up there. So what happened was people just, oh, just like people that call you culture vulture and get mad, you got the other end. You got the people that (laughs) just want people to do right. And man, black people came at him, called his job, went to his Facebook page where he had everything listed. He had the phone number to his job, his job. What, What kind of job did he have? I was, um... I'm not sure. I can't remember. It was, uh, was it a used car salesman? Or it, was, it was construction. Construction. <laughs> construction, okay. Some kind of construction job where he went around. I think it was roofing, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, but he had all his employee information on there. 
like the boss and everything. And people was calling up to his job. And I will say they, they fired him because of it. And they, I heard he, he said to the news people he moved because he was getting racial threats. Wait, he, he was on the news over this? He, 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 got, he, got an interview. he gave an interview, but it wasn't on camera. Okay. He did an off-camera interview. Okay. <laughs> he blamed it on alcohol. And, uh, but he said he felt threatened for his life. And so they, now they have to move. And, and his boss, but I will say his boss came to the show the next night and apologized to me. Really? Said, we don't hire people like that. We didn't know. She, he goes, so I just want to personally apologize to you for what he said. That's wow. not how my company is. So I had, to do a, I had to do another post saying stop calling the company, threatening the company. You know what I mean? Because they had nothing to do with it. It was just an employee that got drunk. And I, I will say, like I said, a, a drunken tongue speaks a sober mind. So you can blame on the alcohol, but, you know, luckily, you're talking about the Me Too movement. I'm sure I've had drunk nights where I went, God dang, you got a fat ass. <laughs> Would never say that in, in a sober mind, but I'm sure a drunk mind probably went. I mean, how do you feel that this guy lost his job? Do you feel like he got what's coming to him, or do you feel a little bit bad? I don't feel bad, because yeah. he came to my job. <laughs> right. And, and, and gave no regard. And you said it in front of my wife, so you had to make eye contact. Mm. And that, and and like I said, it's sometimes people need a reality check, you know. So and he was, cause I, I I had a Trump joke, and he yells out, and I had a Trump joke that wasn't even like bashing Trump. It was making fun of, like people that voted for Trump, right? And he goes, well, there's more of us than there are them. And at first I was like, did he just yell that out? And I thought more Trump supporters and non-Trump. But then when he said. The N word, I was like, oh, he means more of us than black people. It was what I took out of, mm -hmm. he was looking at the audience. So I think he meant there's more white people here than black people in and, Marco Island. And was that a, a white area? Oh, Marco Island's very white. Very white. Okay. The black people come down from Fort Myers to come to that comedy club. Gotcha. But if you're just looking at Marco Island, it's like Cocoon, that movie. <laughs> just old white people. Oh, it's old white people. Like, if you got a year to live, go there. You'll make it. Like, that's why I said everything's great about the gig except the gig because just as you, when you get older, you know, you're less rowdy. Your laughs aren't as hearty. So you could have a, a, the, the room there when you got older white people in the room. They might be enjoying the show just as much as a 20-year-old. They just physically can't give you the laughs.